Welcome to the Focolare Word of Life podcast for June 2024. My name is Nick Chanferani and I'll be your host. In today's episode, we'll be listening to experiences that relate to this month's Word of Life, which says, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. Taken from Mark chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. Before we begin with the stories, I'd like to ask Tom Rowley to share a short reflection on this month's Word of Life. Tom, your monthly introductions help us to focus more clearly on the meaning of the Word of Life. So please go ahead and share this with us now. There are many times in the gospel that Jesus said or implied that a person's faith has healed them. Faith is a gift that is given to each of us, and all we have to do is accept it with gratitude. This month's Word of Life is an exercise in our faith. Our acts of love toward our neighbor, whether small, like the smile we give, or making sacrifices to love, are the seeds that we scatter. We have so many opportunities throughout any day to sow those seeds. Then we must have faith that even if we don't understand how during the moment we give love, Jesus will make them grow in some way. Welcome, Gary. It is a great pleasure having you on our podcast today. Hi, Nick, and uh, thank you for having me. It's a delight to be here. As I was reading your story earlier, I couldn't help but think how it ties so nicely to this month's scripture phrase. But before you share your experience, can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Gary Hawk. Uh, it's spelled with a U, but pronounced like the bird. Uh, I am a retired university administrator, having worked for many years at Emory University, in Atlanta. I'm married to a, a wonderful woman named Sarah and have two children and uh, two cats. Uh, my children are uh, long fled from the house, <laughs> but uh, the cats remain. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thanks for that, Gary. Well, listen, we are eager to listen to your beautiful story. So the mic is yours. Well, thank you, Nick, again. Um, this parable about the farmer uh, sowing seeds reminds me of a sermon that my wife Sarah and I heard many years ago in Idaho from an Episcopal priest. He talked about planting small seeds of goodness. Uh, often we don't know how those seeds might take root and grow, and more frequently we have no idea whether there was any harvest from those seeds. But we are encouraged to plant such small seeds of goodness along the way. I hope that in my life I have been able to plant some seeds like that. But I do know for certain that such seeds have been planted in my life by others. And one special seed that has been the idea that God is calling me to serve God's people in a particular way. Uh, this seed was first planted when I was probably about 10 years old. Throughout my childhood, my parents were very active in our church, and they made sure that regular Sunday worship and Sunday school were a part of the life for my three siblings and myself. In fact, in his mid-40s, my father would leave a career in business and enter the ministry. So life in the church, the movement of the Holy Spirit, the need to listen to the voice of God in my life have been a part of my faith journey from very early on. Well, I recall that around the age of 10, I was serving as an acolyte in our church. And one Sunday after the service, I had gone to the sacristy to hang up my acolyte's robe and when I came back out into the nave, my parents were talking to the senior minister, just chatting after the service. 
And as I joined their casual conversation, I remember that the minister looked at me and said, Gary, would you ever think about being a minister when you grow up? And according to family lore, my response was rather facetious and cheeky. And I said, well, I think I'd like a job where I work more than just Sunday. Of course, everybody laughed, but I think a seed was planted in that moment. Uh, much later, as I was preparing to graduate from college, I was uncertain about where my life was going to take me. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do as a career. And it happened that a lifelong friend of my mother was visiting. And as we were talking about what the future held, <clears throat> uh, she said to me, Gary, I know what you should do. You should be a preacher. You'd be good at it. Well, <laughs> Uh, the plant was watered a little bit at that moment. As it happened, preaching would have to wait. I did go on to graduate school and earned a master's degree in literature. And then again, uncertain what I wanted to do, I did respond to a call to go to seminary, and I earned a Master of Divinity degree. But I was unsure of my pastoral abilities. Life was a bit complicated at that time. And instead of going into the ministry, I decided to pursue a PhD degree in Christian ethics and to have a career in university administration. But as it happened, circumstances, or maybe the hand of God, conspired to arrange things so that frequently I was asked to preach in university chapel. And occasionally, the priest of my Episcopal church would ask me to stand in uh, while the priest was on vacation or just wanted to take a break from preparing a weekly sermon. So again, uh, that seed, now a little plant, seemed to be being fertilized. Well, just before the pandemic in 2020, I retired, and I began to think about what the next chapter of my life would hold. It happened that my wife and I had moved a, a few years earlier, and the Episcopal Church that we belonged to now was far more distant uh, than we wanted it to be for us to be involved the way we liked. So about a year ago, we began attending another Episcopal Church close to home. And maybe the second or third week after we had started attending, after one of the services, we were talking to the priest and thinking about how we could be involved in the life of the church. And Sarah mentioned to the priest, you know, Gary is an experienced preacher and very good, actually. So if you ever want to take a break from preparing a sermon, call on him. Well, I thought, thanks a lot. <laughs> but the priest turned to me and said, when would you like to start? <laughs> we all laughed, of course. But in fact, over the last five months, I have stepped into the pulpit four, four times. And each time, I have been blessed by the work of trying to discern the work of God for that particular parish at this particular time. The upshot of all of this is that I am now in the discernment process in the Episcopal Diocese of Atlanta to become a licensed lay preacher. Uh, this would mean that I'm authorized to preach not only in my home parish, but in other parishes as well, where there might not be a, a regular priest or a regular worship leader. That minister who planted that seed more than six decades ago, I'm sure has gone on to his reward, well earned. But that seed that he planted perhaps now is growing into a place where it can bear fruit with God's help and God's grace. It's just so beautiful to see how in, in these, this period of time, how God has worked in your life and from the beginning to, to that you know initial seed being planted to 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 now and uh, 
and uh, yeah, it only took 60 years, but it, it, it's bearing fruit. So it's wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. When God, when God has hold of us, God does not let go. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And I want to thank you so much for joining us today. It has been really a gift to have you and uh, to have listened to your wonderful experience. Thank you. Thank you again, Nick. Before we dive into our next story, I have a quick but important message for all of you listeners. Each month, we are so delighted to bring you real-life stories of faith in action, but we can't do it alone. This free podcast is supported by our donors. If you've been moved by what you've heard, if you found a glimmer of hope or a spark of joy in our episodes, we urge you to join us in this divine adventure. Consider donating to Focalari Media by visiting our website, focalarimedia.com forward slash donate, and specify that your donation is for the Word of Life podcast. Together, let's continue to inspire thousands of people all over the world so that the Word can become part of our lives. A heartfelt thank you for your support. Welcome, Ellie. It's so good to have you on our podcast. Hi, Nick. Thanks for having me. I was super excited. I would love for you to introduce yourself and, and tell our listeners. Oh, I'm sorry. Something. No, no problem. <laughs> Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, absolutely. So um, my name is Elisa. I'm in New York, and I have a pretty flexible job, which allows me to um, volunteer during the week. I started volunteering at a soup kitchen, one of the largest soup kitchens in New York, actually. And uh, around right after the, um, the COVID, essentially. Um, so it's kind of like a pre-COVID, post-COVID world. But um, particularly during COVID is when we saw an enormous influx of people requiring those types of services. So um, I decided to roll up my sleeves and, and see where I could help out. That's beautiful. That's awesome. And, and you know, the, the word of life, um, as I mentioned before we started the podcast, is about the kingdom of God and how the, you know, the seed is planted and it grows and it, it takes mm -hmm. time to grow, you know, and, and you mentioned something about that, how similar your, your, your activity is about that, really. Yeah, really, because this the soup kitchen has been this particular soup kitchen that I volunteer for um, started actually 40 years ago. They just celebrated their 40th anniversary. So 1983. Right. So it's 41. But um, it really started from a group of concerned individuals, young adults that uh, came together and saw a need for, um, you know, for assisting with homelessness and, and hunger within the community. So they had pulled themselves together and they had really had such a successful time doing that, that then it spread to other communities. Once word got out and how successful they were, it was kind of like a a seed that continued to grow, really, and network through the rest of, of uh, the areas in, in New York, really. So that's particularly why I think I was so struck by that, um, you know, this word of life for the month of June in particular. But um, we, you know, and we're familiar with how young groups of people come together in, in times of, um, you know, either crisis or even just when there's a, a huge, strong sense of needing something more um, and how that grows and, and how strong that can be. So I'm happy to be a part of that in every opportunity, every way that I can. How many people typically will pass by or come through the, that soup kitchen day a day? Um, we, well, we serve approximately 1300 hot meals a week. So several hundred will come through those doors a day. We have a dining hall where they're able to um, come in and sit down and, and receive a hot meal. We also discovered during COVID when it was closed that we had a, a takeout window, uh, one for individuals and another window for families. Um, we discovered that some people, they prefer to just take their meal and go. So we left that part open um, even after things started opening up uh, every now and then, because it was devastating when things had to close down. 
tell us a little bit of, of your interaction with, with the guests that you have there. So, well, since I go once a week, I start to see those familiar faces, right? And I'm aware of kind of like their little habits and what they like and they don't like. So, you know, I'll, I'll remember that Jimmy doesn't like peas, so I'll give him an extra scoop of carrots or, you know, this one doesn't like uh, that or they prefer extra sauce on their uh, pasta. So I'll remember that. And it just makes them feel that much more you know, special to have that type of connection and relationship. It's not, it's not that we don't interact with the the guests, right? Like we're not, we're not these people just behind this curtain. They're in front of us and they're here and, and we're there to help. So um, that's one of the ways that we're able to really concretely show that it's, we're happy to have them. I mean, it's a sad situation why people come for various reasons to a soup kitchen, but it doesn't have to be so gloom and doom. Um, it, it really is a, a lovely place. Again, thank you, Ellie. It's so great to hear this. It's, it's encouraging and uh, it's beautiful. Continue and um, yes. Uh, we'll, oh we'll yeah, it's an ongoing thing, Nick. It's, uh, it's gonna be an ongoing thing. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks again, Ellie. Of course. It was good to see you, Nick. Thanks so much. You too. Bye. Hi, Lucy. Welcome to our podcast. It's great having you with us. Thank you for inviting me. Great, great. Well, Lucy, before you share your lovely story, can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Yes. So I live in Houston, Texas, and I have five adult children and 11 grandchildren. And I'm a registered nurse, semi-retired, and um, I stay pretty busy. I can imagine with, uh, you know, all those wonderful grandchildren, I'm sure you have the opportunity to meet with them and spend time with them, which is wonderful. So, yes, yes great. Well, uh, this is wonderful. We're happy now to listen to your experience. So go ahead. All right. Thank you. For five or six years now, making time on a regular basis to share prayers and experiences with my daughter in Florida has been a challenge. We would promise to connect, but her busy family schedule and job would frequently get in the way. However, I always felt I was planting seeds. I would try again another time to connect. In the last three months, she found an opportunity. Her new job has a 15-minute commute every day. Now she calls and is ready for us to share morning prayers and experiences of trying to live unity at home and work. We assure each other as she arrives at work to live with Jesus among us throughout the day. A recent experience of prayers answered with seeds previously sown my young adult grandson has been struggling for some time how to maneuver a transition point in his apprenticeship. Without taking over the problem, my daughter and I decided to FaceTime with him. We listened to him and tried to be one as he talked to us. By the end of the conversation, he was able to come up with a plan that he was happy with. Wonderful, wonderful. And I think you're right. This is little seeds, you know, that you planted already by trying to love him before, I'm sure. And and uh, the fact that you both together, you know, called him and, and you had that mutual love among you. And I'm sure that was like a beacon of light for him. So that's I think so, and I feel like it's just a, it's an ongoing, you know, it's it's not done. It's we're we're all a work in progress. Thank you, Lucy. It was a real gift having you on our podcast today. Well, it was my joy to be here. Thank you for asking. Okay, take care now. Right, bye. So thank you for joining us today. I hope you've been inspired by the wonderful stories shared. I look forward to being with you again next month. To listen to a reflection and commentary on the Word of Life, log on to your favorite podcast platform and look for Focolari Word of Life podcast. 
There you will be able to listen to previous episodes. I also invite you to join me each month for new episodes. You can also read additional experiences in Living City magazine. Please consider making a donation to Focalar Media so that we can continue producing inspiring podcasts. Visit give.focolare.us and look for the Focalar Media tab. Thank you in advance for your support. Bye for now and God bless.